The concepts of risk and return and how they relate to each other is an important part of understanding your own risk profile. When we refer to risk, we don't mean the risk of losing everything, but instead we mean the variability of your returns over any given time period. When we talk about high-risk investments, we mean those assets that have a high probability of changing in value over time. This change in value can be both positive and negative, and is usually a feature of assets such as shares, property and infrastructure. Lower risk investments are typically assets like cash and bonds, and while they can still change in value over time, the range of this change is usually far more moderated. This differing range of returns can motivate people to make quick decisions on assets that should be long-term investments. It is important to understand that an investment which has the ability to provide returns of 10% also has the possibility to deliver a negative return of at least that same level and possibly even more from time to time. The relationship between risk and return is important to understand, particularly in the context of negative returns. Negative returns simply mean your investment drops in value from one point in time to another. A 10% loss doesn't always sound significant, but when we convert it to numbers, on a balance of $200,000, this is a drop of $20,000, which in extreme cases can happen overnight. You need to consider whether this would concern you enough to want to take action. How you feel about a drop in value and or a range of returns is different for everyone and should help guide you on where to invest. We all want great returns year on year, but the reality is, if you take on more risk, you may get a bumpier ride on the way to the top. Investor psychology tells us that we instinctively react more to a drop in the value of our money than we do to receiving great returns. This natural behaviour has seen many investors selling their investment after it has dropped in value, only to buy it again once the markets go back up. When you take a step back, this doesn't make a lot of sense, because most people wouldn't sell their home if it was worth $50,000 less. They usually prefer to wait until the value comes back up. Provided investments are of good quality, that same principle should apply. Whilst being an investor means withstanding the behaviour of the markets that are beyond our control, there are ways we attempt to smooth out the impact of the volatility and manage risk. You've probably already heard about not putting all your eggs in one basket. Well, this is probably one of the key techniques in reaching long-range financial goals while minimising risk. Diversifying your portfolio by investing in different assets attempts to reduce your portfolio's sensitivity to adverse events and market swings. There are six key asset classes you can invest in. Cash, fixed interest, including bonds, Australian shares, international shares, property and infrastructure. These asset classes can move in different directions at different times. So if your portfolio is diversified across a number or all of these areas, Unpleasant movements in one may be offset by positive results in another. Although diversification does not guarantee against loss, it can subdue the impact. Understanding what your investment goals are and how you would react if your investments drop in value is important. This helps to determine how much money you should have in growth assets and how much you should have in defensive, lower risk assets.